a good one god bless you all uh, um god bless you all and uh i thank the lord jesus for the opportunity we have to be all together uh, i'm glad i was able to come on a little earlier today and i pray by the mercies and the grace of god um that you will all grow in the grace of god as i am growing in the grace of god and that what the lord jesus has ordained for us that we will all receive it and I pray that you're ready. Always remember, when you come live with me, make sure you always have your pen, paper, or your tablet. You never know. If it goes into deeper mysteries of the Spirit, I don't like to keep them up. Uh, because um, the body of Christ sometimes lacks maturity. And they would call what is good evil because uh, the the extent of understanding may not be where it needs to be. Um, I'm hoping that by God's grace, I'll get to uh, um, uh, restream the influence of the dead on the living. I, I know a lot of people have been asking for that, but I pray by God's grace, the Lord Jesus will give me the grace and uh, will we'll, uh, rebroadcast it. It was just too much. And to be honest with you, what I shared was probably 1%. Yeah, you know, the, our God is the God of mysteries. You know, there are hidden mysteries that God ordained. Anyone who thinks they know everything about God is foolish because God is the God of all creation, the visible and, in, and the invisible. Uh, this is why in the scriptures it says, Seek me, and I will show you things you do not know of. So there are many, many mysteries that are hidden. And uh, what we have in Scripture, as the Scriptures themselves say, is sufficient for what? Salvation, doctrine, correction. But it's not everything because the Spirit of God still has something to teach us. You see, this is why the Holy Spirit is your teacher. Because there are things that are not written that you can only receive by revelation. Ask yourself this question. When John was taken up in the book of Revelation and, and he, he met the angel of the Lord, a lot of people, I don't know why they think he spoke to the Lord Jesus, but he tells you clearly that the Lord sent an angel to signify what he said. And every time he tried to worship him, he told him, stop. <laughs> but there's something interesting. There are things he was shown, he was told, don't write this, keep it. Write this one, but this one, hide it. So he was given information for us and not for himself. But he was still told to not write it. But somebody on earth right now knows that. Elijah didn't tell us everything. Moses didn't tell us everything. What we were told was enough to take us somewhere. And then there are things that are hidden. But those things are not important because we, we don't need them for salvation, but we need them for a mighty walk with God. Amen. You see, there are certain things, let me say it this way. Those who know their God shall do what? Great exploits. So to know God is to have an advantage in God. The more you know about him, the greater you can manifest uh, the Lord Jesus. I saw somebody asking, what is the difference between uh, word of knowledge and prophecy? Well, it's in the word, word of knowledge, not words of knowledge. Let me, let me put it this way. Prophecy has only to do with the past. Somebody will say, what do you mean? Because everything you ever say is in the past to God. 
But when God speaks, he will also speak of your past as if it's the present. Word of knowledge is in insight so that you know how to pray for somebody. I feel like this or is there something like this? That is word of knowledge. Prophecy is detailed. That's why in the Old Testament, you don't see the gift of word of knowledge. It doesn't exist. That's a New Testament thing. But in the Old Testament, when, uh, when Elisha could reveal what the king, what was that king's name, uh, what he was doing in his house, even in his bedroom, the guys were upset. They were like, the king was like, who, do we have a traitor amongst us? He said, no, there's a prophet in Israel that he has the ability to even know what is in your room, O king. He said, we need to kill this guy. Notice they didn't say he has word of knowledge. Because there's a big difference. Is somebody getting this? Yes. There's a big difference. Word of knowledge is insight on what is going on with somebody so that you can pray. Prophecy unravels what is hidden in order for the future to be fixed. Wow. Is that making sense? Yes. You can't give word of knowledge for 30 minutes. Because word of knowledge is simply information. Prophecy changes things because it's God speaking. Is that making sense? By a prophetic word, somebody's life changes. Word of knowledge can change. That's why it's called word of knowledge. It is to give you insight. It is not prophecy. Simple example of prophecy. Um, and I hope this is helping. Simple example of prophecy. A young girl in church, she's holding an envelope with her mother. I go to the mother, I take the envelope. But to the young girl, I take the envelope. I wasn't even, I was done ministering. I took the envelope from the young lady, from the young girl. She had two daughters, right? I took the envelope from her and I said, I'm seeing a man in this envelope. This man, I am seeing Peter in prison. Who is this man? She says, it's my husband. I told her, because of your daughter, I'm going to pray for him. Your husband was arrested at this time, this and this and this. He's in court right now. They redid the thing the first time. They denied it. Now you're going back. By Wednesday, this whole case will be thrown out. That's prophecy. Because you don't prophesy without insight of the past. Because when the past is revealed, the chains that were hidden are broken. You see, you fight things you don't know because you have no ability to see. You see, in the spirit, what you think is the past is not the past. Many of you are fighting what you think is in the past, but is still controlling you in the present. So unless it's unraveled, you can't, you, can't, you can't fix anything. Is that making sense? Is it possible to minister with word of knowledge and prophecy on the realm of men? Absolutely. So there's a difference between... Uh, uh, th that's why you find the gift of prophecy and the gift of word of knowledge are separated. The gift of wisdom separated. Yet all these are revelatory gifts. Wisdom, you need revelation to know how to navigate something. Knowledge of the spirit, you need revelation. Understanding of the spirit, all these are revelatory gifts. But inside of a prophet, all these function at the same time. But somebody who receives the gift of prophecy may give utterance to something they don't know. You see, like David was a prophet by impartation from Saul. He was not born a prophet. That's why God said, I have found a man and with my own oil have I anointed him. Meaning David was chosen because Saul failed. He wasn't God's first choice. How do we know that? God didn't even choose him to build his temple. It was Solomon that was chosen. But David was loved by God because of his heart. But the Bible tells you, David also being a prophet, 
but he still needed a prophet who knew what he was doing. David, a guy killed his friend. What should happen to that guy? He should be killed. That's you. Oh my God, I sinned against God. But he's a prophet. Why couldn't he see? Because David was prophet by gifting. If you look at all the prophecies of David, they came from the realm of worship and utterance. You shall not leave my body in the grave. When he came out of that, he didn't even know who he was talking about. <laughs> It's people that understood. David died. So who was he talking about? He's talking about his son, the Messiah. Do you understand it? Yeah. So that's, that's the difference. I hope that's uh, helpful. But we are not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about... Uh, uh, we are here to talk about uh, um, uh, breath, the breath of God. Now, this is going to be... I pray that this will position you to be able to capture spiritual things. Amen. Why you need to know this as a child of God. And when you understand this, you can even tell if you are under attack. You can tell if something is moving in you that should not be there. Ah, you guys are to come for me. It, online, if you already type one for me, just type one. 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 Let me just see one. One. Number one. Just type one if you're ready. Type one if you're ready. Hallelujah. Now. What I'm going to speak about is going to be profound, but it's going to be easy. And um, I believe it's going to take you somewhere with God. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And verse 7, and it reads, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. One more time. Genesis 2, verse 7, And the mm -hmm. Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. One more time. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. One more time. And this is the last one. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man mm -hmm. of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. Do you know why we have a hard time talking with God? Who can, who can answer this? Do you know how we have, why it is difficult? You can pray and still miss God. The Bible actually says that when we start praying in depth of the Spirit, it says, and the Spirit helps us to pray with groanings that words cannot utter. How is it that the whole earth at a point in time everybody could talk the same language. Everybody spoke the same language. When Adam was in the garden, he could interact with God normally. Adam never said, and the word of the Lord came to me. God will come, Adam will talk, and God will talk, and the, that's the end of it. But as we advanced in our walk with God, we lost the language of God because we lost our spiritual nature. Because the language of God is the language of breath. Ah. Every human being inside you is encoded a language that God responds to.
This is why some people like, like I could come to somebody and hear God's voice, but we are all in the same location, but you can't hear it. If you look in the book of Revelation, it says, let him that has an ear hear. How is God telling me to have an ear to hear? Yet I have an ear, but I can't hear him. But the Bible describes God as being spirit. It said the Lord God is spirit. And the word spirit is breath. Not just air, breath. Or in Hebrew, it's ruach. Meaning breath, not the wind, breath. So you don't hear God not because your spiritual ears are shut. It's because when God speaks to you, you have no ability to perceive because your inner man is not able to respond to the breath of God. When God wants to transfer his nature into a man, he does it by his breath. He doesn't do it by praying for you. He doesn't do it by laying hands on you. God transfers his nature into another man by breathing on them. When God created everything, he never used his breath. Whatever is going to be animate to carry his nature, God has to breathe. True impartation of one spirit to another is only done by breath. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? So God is forming man. After he forms man, instead of just saying, be alive, what does God do? <sighs> man becomes conscious. Man becomes alive. And man is the one created in his image. You see, of everything that God created, if you look in scripture, the only one that received breath was man. Even angels are not product of his breath. Even though they are spiritual beings, they are not product of his breath. Whenever the Holy Spirit manifested, what does he say? A mighty rushing wind came because God is breathing. Okay, I'm, uh, uh, I, I don't know if you're capturing where we're going so far. Have you ever been in prayer sometimes? You feel like wind is blowing. You open your eyes, there's no window open and then you're like, God is speaking at that time by breathing on you, but you have no capacity to speak the language of the wind. Yet your inner man is also... Uh, you are expecting to hear a sound. That is why the voice of God is called a still small voice. It's whispers. Why is it a whisper? You are expecting a loud voice. No. It doesn't work like that. You have lost your capacity to capture wind. This is the revelation behind why I blow on people. You'll understand in a little bit. Let me show you something. And then we'll go deep. 
Uh, are you still here? Yes. If you are capturing me so far, just uh, push number one. We are going somewhere. Uh, okay, here it comes. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 19. From verse 19 to 23. John 20 from 19 to 23. And in verse 19. Mm -hmm. And it reads, Then the same day at evening, Mm -hmm. being the first day of the week, Mm -hmm. when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for Mm -hmm. fear of the Jews, Mm -hmm. came Jesus and stood in the midst Mm -hmm. and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Mm -hmm. And when he, said, when he had said so, he shewed unto them his hands and his side. Mm-hmm. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Mm-hmm. Then, Jesus, then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me. Even so I, end you, I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. Notice, is, not, notice this. Jesus wants to activate them into a realm that is sending them. The first thing that Jesus does is he <sighs> receives the Holy Spirit. Wait, what? Why is God doing the same thing he did with Adam? Why is Jesus blowing on them, saying, receive ye the Holy Spirit? Then he tells them, gather, wait for the promise until you get to Jerusalem, stay together, and the Spirit will descend upon you. You see, you cannot have the Spirit of God descend on you unless he has breathed on you. You see, there are things that are in realms. There are things that are in dimensions. Let me read you what Job said, and then I will break some things down for you, and I hope that it will build you to understand what I'm saying. Job chapter 33, verse 4. Job 33 and verse 4. Mm-hmm. And it reads, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. One more time. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. So how do we know somebody is dead? Is when they are no longer breathing. When somebody is no longer breathing, they are dead. The evidence of them being alive is that their breath has made them alive. But if you go to hospital, somebody can be on a breathing machine, but their brain is no longer functioning. And there are people who are alive, walking, but the breath in them has no purpose. What is in them cannot give anybody life. You see, the Bible says that Jesus became a life-giving spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? A life-giving spirit. So the evidence of you being empowered by the Holy Spirit is not just to speak in tongues even though tongues are good. It's not just to pray. Praying is good. This is not the only thing that proves it. You see, when you speak the word of God, something should happen, right? Right? Why is it that so many people are speaking and nothing is changing? Mm -hmm. 
you realize that the Bible doesn't say words have power. It says the power of life and death is in the tongue. It doesn't say it's in the words. The reason why the devil needs words to be powerful is because the devil only can affect your soul. Hurtful words will hurt you, not your spirit, but your soul. They can inspire anger in you. But when it comes to words that will empower your spirit, it is not in the weight of the words, but it is in the breath that is sending the word. Every time you speak, you're breathing. That's why you, <sighs> you cannot speak without producing, without breathing. Breath is part of your voice projecting. And what many of you don't understand that is that every time you speak, you have an opportunity to release your spirit. That is why the Lord Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Meaning the mouth is connected to your inner man. That when you speak, you are bringing out things that are within you. But those things are encoded in the wind that is in you, in the breath that is in you. So if I want to declare an open door, but I don't have the breath of God in me, even though what I have said is good, it does not carry the life to produce something. Uh, So I can speak positively. I can speak amazing sounding things. I can declare exciting things. I can do all those things. But if I don't have the breath of God in me, then my words amount to nothing. That is why speaking positive is great. Nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean things will change. But there are certain people, if they say something to you, something changes. It's because the words, Jesus said it like this. He says, the words I speak to you, they are spirit. Notice he said they are breath and they are life. He is saying the same thing I did to Adam. Every time I am speaking to you, I am speaking the same spirit that produces life. That's what Jesus is saying. He's saying the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And God breathed into man and man became a living soul. So Jesus was not just speaking. He was distributing his nature into situations every time he spoke. When Jesus looked at Lazarus, he says, Lazarus, get up. The spirit of life went into, uh, uh, into, 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 into what is Lazarus. And Lazarus came back to life. He began to breathe. Why? The words that Jesus spoke, they were carrying his breath. It entered Lazarus and Lazarus came to life. No different from Adam. So it is not the breathing. It's that the words of God, they are spirit, they are breath. So every time you speak, you are producing your spirit. This is why somebody, when they want to destroy you, when you speak, you can reveal what is going on in your life. When you speak, you can reveal how you think. The spirit within you will always be reflected by what comes out of you. This is what the Lord Jesus said it like this. He says, it's not what goes into man that makes man to sin, but it's what comes out of him. 
Why is it when you are so under pressure? Have you ever noticed if somebody makes you upset, you can't even breathe? Why does it affect your breathing? When you're so angry, even your breath, your breathing pattern changes. When you're upset, your breathing pattern changes. When you're convicted, your breathing pattern changes. When you're nervous, your breathing pattern changes. When you're nervous, your breathing also changes. If you want to calm down, I need to calm down. Why is it that the, the, there is pressure inside you in, without anything being created? Why is it it's affecting your breath? When something is wrong, you breathe differently. This is why when you want to be calmed down, even when women are, are about to give birth, when you're going through contraction, they tell you to breathe. Breathing is the only thing that can keep you sane. It can calm you down. Even though your body is going crazy, just breathe. <laughs> because it's the only thing that can maintain you. Because the pain is insane. If you're not breathing, you can die. When a demon enters somebody, sometimes we pray for deliverance and you see people yawning. Some people even pass gas because the spirit will leave you like air because it's also breath. It's an evil breath. The expression of spirits is always by wind or breath. The language of God also is in breath. You can tell what kind of breath is in you. When something happens, what are you quickly inclined to do? Tells what is inside of you. Jesus wants to impart life. Okay, let me give you an example. The Bible says life is in the blood, right? The Bible says that, right? Life is what? In the blood. So did you come, did you receive the life of God because the blood of Jesus came on you? Huh? I'm asking a genuine question. How did you receive the life of God? How did you? Huh? The Holy Spirit came on you. You are born of the Spirit of God. You are born of the wind. When he talks about life being in the blood, somebody can have life running in them, blood running in them, but it doesn't mean they are alive. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? When he says life is in the blood, it is talking about two different things, but you need to be spiritual to understand. The blood of Jesus was shed to appease God, to take away God's anger against us. Because as far as we are concerned, Adam was breathing. Adam had blood flowing in him, but God said he's dead. And when Adam was cast out of the presence of God, you see interaction of God and Adam dwindled. David prays in Psalms 51, Lord, don't take your spirit from me. Don't take your breath from me. Take everything, but that one don't take. When Saul was abandoned by God, how did God prove that he abandoned him? God took his spirit. 
And the Spirit of God departed from him. The breath of God departed from him. You have no power in your words because you're operating with words instead of the Spirit. Your words need to be loaded with the breath of God. Words are supposed to be spiritual, not natural. That is why you say I'm blessed and highly favored and nothing actually proves any favor of God on your life. Why is it that when we want to release a blessing on somebody, we have to speak blessing? Why is it just not automatic? And why is it that not everybody can bless? Everyone can say good things, but not everyone has the power to bless. Because in order for you to bless, it is determined by what wind is inside of you. Many of you speak good words, but things are still going bad. You declare good things, but things are still going south. Because the Spirit of God does not just inhabit your body. The Spirit of God must possess your words. Because everything that God ever created, He created by words. So we know it is by words that things are transferred spiritually. It is by words that things are transferred spiritually. Both good and evil. <laughs> Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yes. Even bad things. When a witch wants to curse you, they will do the Harry Potter, expel you something, boom. Why, why do they use words? Why does every spell have to have words? Why is words the access to everything? Because it's an invocation. It's a connection to a certain language. When we say pray in the spirit, it is not only speaking about tongues. It's using your spiritual nature to communicate with God. But there are men who have a fallen nature and they have the language of Satan in them. So they need a certain language to invoke demons and to interact with demons. When God told Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones, God said, can these bones live again? Is it 37, Ezekiel 37? Can these bones live again? Say, uh, only you know, Lord. Say, tell these bones, I'll breathe my breath on you. Bones don't breathe. Why are you breathing on bones? Somebody go to Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, uh -huh. verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and mm -hmm. carried me out in the spirit of the Lord mm -hmm. and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, mm -hmm. and caused me to pass by them round about. Mm -hmm. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And he said unto me, prophesy upon the bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. 
So dry situations need the breath of God. <laughs> Dead situations need the breath of God. Whenever God wanted to make something alive, he breathed on it. Dead, dead situation. Remember Matthew chapter 6. God doesn't like too much talking. You know that. Said many speak so many things. Thinking by them they will be heard. So God doesn't hear you because you prayed for two hours. God doesn't hear you because you prayed for six hours. That is not a bad thing. But it's not a necessary thing. But the Bible says Jesus prayed all night. The reason why God doesn't care about too much speaking is because you are speaking in the flesh, not in the spirit. Wow. In 1 Corinthians, I believe, 14, Paul says this. If I speak a language that the other doesn't understand, I will be a barbarian unto him and he shall be a barbarian unto me. Many of you are talking to God and God is like, what are you even saying? And God is speaking to you and you're like, what, what, what? I didn't hear anything. There is a conflict of language because God doesn't change. God is the same. He's an unchangeable changer. But we need to rise to where God is. So if you're waiting for God to meet you where you are in terms of how he speaks, you have played yourself. God is talking to bones and said, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live again. Before even flesh. Before lungs. Before anything, he said, I will breathe on you. The Holy Ghost experience... To know that you are filled with the Spirit is not that you just pray. You see, to be filled by the Spirit of God is in stages. When Jesus breathed on the apostles, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Did Jesus lie? No. They received the Holy Spirit. Before he ascended, he breathed on them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Then he told them, wait until the Spirit has come upon you. You go to Acts, I believe, chapter 2 is when the day of Pentecost fully came, right? It says, and there was a whirlwind in the room. Crazy wind blew in the room. The breath of God came on them again. And the Bible says, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then it goes on again. Peter and John go to the temple. They get whooped for healing a man who could not walk. They go back home and they pray. God answers them. He says the room that they were in was shaken. And the spirit of God came and filled them again. And they had boldness. Notice that your experience with the Holy Spirit is made available. You see, you think that when the Holy Spirit descends on you, he fills what you have made available. If you have not been broken, then the next part he needs to fill, he cannot until that part is given up. So God will fill what you made available. Then you go through life and then something will happen, you surrender to God more. Then the Holy Spirit fills that part that you surrendered again. Then you keep walking with him, something again happens. That you are broken into pieces. Then you realize you need to give that part to God. He comes and takes that place, he fills it again. Until every inch of you is filled. Your tongue is filled. Your ears are filled. Your eyes are filled. That when you speak, it is God speaking. When you breathe, it is God breathing. That whatever environment you're in, when you just sit there and you're interacting with people, just your presence in somebody's life, things begin to get better because the breath of life is flowing. <clears throat> is this making sense to somebody? 
This is where you find some men of God that will love God. They are faithful with God. There are places in their life that are better than others. You find them cursing people. <coughs> One minute they say, they speak like this in the dark. Ah, F-bombs, S-bombs, all kinds of bombs are coming out of them. Yet James is saying, can sweet waters spring with unclean waters? Something is wrong. And what did he mean by springs of sweet waters? Remember I taught you yesterday in service when Jesus said to the woman, do you want living waters? I can give you water that you will not thirst again. And the woman said, sir, give me this water that I don't thirst, that I don't need to come here. Jesus said to her, all right, where's your husband? Jesus began to speak to her. Jesus changed, he entered spiritual language. And the woman left there and said, I have met a man that has told me everything about my life. This man has mended my life. Why did he, why did she do that? Because she received water. Meaning water is the prophetic word that comes from you. When he says rivers of living water shall flow out of your bellies, it is not talking about the Holy Spirit. Churches say that and I'm like, what are you guys reading? Ah, Holy Spirit, uh, rivers of living waters. No, if you understand spiritual things, you understand that your spirit indwells your belly. Your spirit is here, it's not here. Your spirit is in here. So when it's saying out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water, it's saying from your spirit, life-giving words will flow. That is why it says you are a tree planted in Lebanon. You are a tree planted by the river, but yet you are in the desert. How is this making sense? He's saying you are a tree planted where everything is dry, but your words will produce life. Your words will water the desert and turn it into something else. The stream of water is now when the breath comes out. Life. We know everything physically is made alive by water, not spiritually. So it's talking about words that have been released. They have been converted into something that can give life to what is around. What kind of words are you speaking? What kind of words are coming out of you? The Bible says it like this. Let everything that... <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me. The Bible says it like this. Let everything that has breath, not everything that has a mouth. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Not everything that has a mouth. Let everything. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Not everything that has a mouth. Meaning I don't need a mouth to praise God. I need breath. I don't need to shout to praise God. I need breath. What kind of breath is proceeding from you?
Somebody says, uh, uh, the enemy is trying to attack my breath. No, I just swallowed the wrong way. <laughs> Satan can't touch me. <laughs> he doesn't have that kind of power over me. <laughs> so so ask yourself this ask yourself this what kind of breath is flowing in me You need to be honest enough to ask yourself this. Do I have the breath of God in my lungs? Do I have the breath of God in my lungs truly, truthfully? If my words don't give life, the breath of God is bringing me to Christ, I will live eternally. But the breath of God is not in my nostril. Because when I speak, nothing changes. The Bible says, by a mighty wind, God parted the Red Sea by the blow of his nostril. But God doesn't breathe, God is spirit. But when we look, it is Moses that commanded the sea to part. So how did God cause the Red Sea to part? Moses' lips. Moses speaking, it was God doing. When the Lord God, wanted to lift and raise prophets in Israel, he said, hey, Moses, I will take your breath and put it in them. The only thing that enters you and becomes part of you is breath. It goes straight into you. When the Lord Jesus appeared to me years ago, he told me whenever you pray for people, you shall blow on them. I asked him, why? He said, because what is inside your spirit will transfer to them. When the young boy died, where Elisha was, Elisha said, Lord, why have you taken this young boy, knowing that I live here? He took the young boy, he said, Lord, give him back his spirit. He put the boy on the bed. He laid on the boy face to face and breathed and the kid came back to life. CPR done at the right time, somebody comes well. <laughs> And that's physical. Are you listening to what I'm saying, children of God? This is why sometimes I just look at people and say, it's done. 
They're like, ah, but you didn't even pray for me. Then they come back next week. Oh my God, you will not believe what happened. Because you think it's just in speaking. No. It's what breath has preceded you. Has life been blown into your situation? Has God breathed into your situations? This is the mighty question. This is the big question. There is a way to get there. Amen. I said there's a way to get there. Amen. There is a mighty way to get there because it is our destiny, all of us. When somebody is sick, the Bible says that he sent his word and healed them. But what is his word? The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So every time there is somebody sick, God blows when somebody speaks. It goes to the leg, the leg gets healed. It goes to the lungs, the lungs get healed. It goes to any part of the body, it goes into any situation and the person gets healed. Not because their ears heard. Do you know why Jesus could heal you even if you, even if you did not have faith? Even though Jesus wanted to raise somebody's faith in order for them to make themselves well. But there's a man that came to him and said, if you can do something, he said, help my unbelief. And Jesus said, where's your son? And Jesus was able to fix that situation. Jesus would get married and say, how long will I be with you? Because when Jesus spoke, he did not speak to the person, he spoke to the situation. You want healing, you want your heart to believe instead of your body part to hear it. I said something profound, but some people didn't hear it. Ah, some people missed it. Let's keep the thumbs up going. Let's get the thumbs up higher. This is why Peter and John could heal a man at the beautiful gate, asking them for silver and gold. And they healed the person by fire, by force. The person did not want healing. The person was not praying for healing. The person was not expecting healing. The person was only expecting silver and gold. No, you're not listening to me. The man was not praying for healing. It means that anybody that has the breath of God can bring deliverance and healing to people who did not even know they needed deliverance. They can bring transformation to people who did not know they even need transformation. Live alone, they believed in it, but they didn't even know that they need it. How many people have come to our church and I'll start praying, everybody begins to, even people who were shandala, ba, 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 all of a sudden you see them, ah, no, we don't want to live. How, uh, wait, how did that happen? Because the breath of life came. And when the, I, I'm talking to the wrong people. When the breath of life comes, anything that is of death must go. I was in Atlanta with Pastor Jamal Bryant. I said, okay, let me pray. My, my, my son Jeremiah was there. Who else was here that was there? Jeremiah was there. Yeah, Auntie Roses, you're everywhere. You're a spirit. Uh, even, you, no, you didn't go this trip. You're not there. Wow, that's actually shocking that you're not there. Well, I was there, and when we were going, my son Lee was also there. And, and he was like, oh, they have no idea what they're going to get into. <laughs> I was like, oh, we're going to shake them up a little bit because they have not seen anything like this. Said so before we prophesy, I said, okay, let me get my spirit going. But before that, let's clean the house first. In the mighty name of Jesus, any wicked spirit here, the moment I, I didn't even finish saying that, 
instantly there was a woman that was brought up she was blind blind could not see i think it was a husband or somebody brought her forward ah! said leave her she felt i said when she raises up her eyes will be open she got up and she could see The church was shaken. My big brother Jamal was just like. <laughs> you see, you can't prophesy to everyone, but you can blow on everyone. Amen. When Jesus was among the multitude, how did he heal them all? How did he cast devils out of all? He blew on them. The question is, do you have the breath of life? Yes, you have life because Christ is in you. But do you have the breath of life? Do you have the capacity to make others alive? Oh, I feel like I'm by myself. Do you have the breath of God in your nostril? That when you speak, you see, everybody says, ah, whatever, is, whatever we bind on earth uh, shall be bound in heaven. Uh, whatever we lose on earth uh, shall be loosed in heaven. But nothing is ever changing. You miss the point. Jesus says, to you, I will give the keys. Jesus said, oh, whoever will speak to this mountain, whoever will speak to this mountain and tell it to drop itself in the sea, it will obey. Jesus could talk to a tree. The Bible actually says Jesus went to the tree, finding no fruit. Jesus answered the tree, meaning the tree spoke to him. It says Jesus answered the tree, no one will eat of you. When the enemy speaks, when cancer speaks, when misfortune speaks, do you have the capacity to answer it? You are fighting with doctor's report instead of fighting the wind that spoke that. Jesus answered the tree. Jesus rebuked the wind. There is something that is responsible for what you're going through. <laughs> but if you don't have spiritual words, you can't address those things. Because to have spiritual words is also have spiritual consciousness. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You are wrestling flesh and blood because you are not spiritual. Thou art in the flesh. When I attack my brother and sister, I'm in the flesh. That is why I always say people who want to expose other people, they are the most foolish people on earth. If you truly have God in you, you will pray for people. Go live gather people, say, let's pray for this brother and this sister. That they would, but you're busy saying, they are false. Is that what Jesus came, he, he, he called us to call people false, or he called us to pray for them, love people, pray for them, intercede for them. It is because they have no breath of life in them. A majority of them attack people because they don't know what they are doing. Results are coming. You think about it, right? Right now we have over 4,000 people live watching, right? One person will think they are smarter than all the 4,000 people. Imagine if I was at service. 
and I go to everyone on the island prophesy to them. Church will never end. Remember when we used to be in the house, I used to pray and minister to everyone. We'll start at 7.30. Ah, I will finish at 4, 5 a.m. Praying and ministering to people. The Lena and them would look for every position to stand until they can't anymore. It was, it was punishment. Then I realized, no, I don't need to do it this way. It's just too, it's just too much of a process. Is it not true, Gabby? We used to be there until 4, 5 a.m. And we started at 7. I don't want to kill my flesh before time. <laughs> Ministering like that, I won't have any energy for me. I always say one day I'll just tell people to line up and I'll prophesy to everybody online. In church, line up, quick. I'll time myself. Everyone gets 30 seconds prophetic. No, I can do that. It's easy. I hear from God. <laughs> no, not today, please. <laughs> you imagine I can be here and by the grace of God, by the gift of God, I can minister to somebody just seeing their name. Kill. You think if you're with me, it's even easier. So you need to ask yourself this sincerely, truthfully, genuinely, with everything that is in you. Do I have the breath of God? This is why I don't argue scripture with people. Because people who want an intellectual argument, they are not ready to be transformed spiritually. They have canalized God. It's a waste of time. Do you have the breath of God in you? That your words can produce life. You have the instruments of life, but you do not have the bullet of life. You have the lips. You have the tongue. But what loads that to produce life is not there. You're shooting blanks. They can't do any damage to any demon. That's why you find some people and they're doing deliverance. They need to make people renounce. And there's somebody that will just say, hey, all of you out. Ah, gone. Nobody needed to renounce anything. It's the amount of breath. Do you have a violent wind <laughs> that can be like a tornado that can sweep and take everything with it? Or do you have just regular wind that can make a demon uncomfortable but you need to make them renounce certain things for things to leave? How much of the wind of the Spirit do you have? Oh, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Let's keep those thumbs up going. Let's keep those thumbs up going. I want to show you how easy it is to enter. If you're ready, just type one that I know that you're ready. Mm. 
Isaiah 42 verse 5. Isaiah 42 and verse 5, and it reads, mm -hmm. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, mm -hmm. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, mm -hmm. and spirit to them that walk, it, walk therein. Wow. Notice, why is he saying, He giveth breath to the people on earth and spirits to the people that walk? So you can have the spirit, but you don't have the breath. Because there are people who are operating by the breath of God. And there are people who are simply alive because of the spirit. <laughs> and the word became breath. And the word became flesh. Meaning the spirit transformed. Acts seventeen twenty five. Acts seventeen twenty five. And it reads, Neither is worshipped with man men's hands as though he needed anything, mm -hmm. seeing he giveth to all life mm -hmm. and breath and all things. Breath to all things. He doesn't only give life, but he gives breath to all things. Your account needs his breath. Ah, I'm talking. Your business needs his breath. Everything you do needs his breath. We need the breath of God. 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 I want you to grab the best that you want to give God. Whatever it is that you want to give to God. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you how to do this. And by the grace of God, life will begin to flow from you into every situation. Go quickly, grab your best gift you want to give to God. And thank you for all those who are supporting the work of God. May God increase you and God bless you. When we come back, I will show you the way to get to this place. For my future like Romo I used to keep taking the wrong road Now watch how I'm breaking these strongholds Yeah, you made me beautiful You know that you the go. You came and gave me a song I was lost, now I'm found Then you sent me I was blind, now I see 2020 I give thanks for the day That you came into my life Where would I be? Where would I be? Fear 
hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side. Where would I be? If it hadn't been for the Lord who was on my side. Struggle with police and have me shaking On somebody t-shirt, no graving You could hear the choir singing about grace and Could have been shot down like my brother died for his Jordans Could have been laying out in the street, you know where the chalk is That's why I'm grateful when I wake up in the morning Cause I stay up in my father's hands like Spalding No lie, we talking serious Hospital room, feeling delirious You took my grave to a body And took my broken heart and Back to where it started Oh, I just said thank you Wish I had enough to repay you Cause when it's all said and done I can only give the credit for love Noon 
Sunday or the evening, Monday, Tuesday or the weekend.
All right, God bless you. And we are back. So um, again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And uh, make sure you hit the, you click the thumbs up. So the more thumbs up we have, the more people are going to see the video. So make sure you click the thumbs up. Uh, now, how do we receive the breath of God? How do we receive the breath of God? Now, if life and death is in the power of the tongue, it means that it's not just enough to not speak negative words. There must be a spiritual element to your tongue. There must be a spiritual element to your tongue. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue and whoever love it, they shall eat the fruit of it. Right? So, when the Bible says that by their fruits you shall know them, it's not talking about their deeds. It's talking about their words. What their words produce will tell you who they are. So when people read that, they think that by what people do, everybody has mistakes. But who can produce life shows who is with them. Cyrus was not a believer, but God was with Cyrus. Everything that Cyrus did, every king that he fought, he overcame them. God says, I have anointed him. So when he says, by their fruits you shall know them, he's talking about not by only the content of their words. What can their words produce? If you lived in the days of David, many of you would have called David fake. He murdered a man. If David had a church, nobody would go to his church. But you read his book, oh, a man after God's heart, you forget all the other messes that he had. Killed a man, had a bunch of women, he actually imparted that into Solomon. Solomon was even worse than him. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> but the fruits of David were different. Because you see, the flesh will always have weaknesses. We will be perfected when we meet the Lord. We are heading into perfection. This is why the Bible says those who are in Christ are not condemned. Because God knows that we will make mistakes. It's obvious. Anyone who says they don't make mistakes, they don't sin, is the biggest liar in the world. Samson. Uh, Samson was deep. If Samson had a church, nobody would go to the church of Samson. Was it Isaiah that was told to marry a prostitute? Hosea. Hosea is told, you shall preach naked. Isaiah was told you would preach naked for three years. Who would go, who, who would go to his church? Says a madman. Three years. Imagine if I was just out here. <laughs> the Lord said. <laughs> Right now, as I speak, the Lord has. <laughs> it will be deep. <laughs> so you see, the fruits of the Spirit are what a man produces. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's not just what a man does, but what a man produces. God speaks to a man, tells him, ah, go and marry a prostitute for Israel. Is a pro they are prostituting in front of me. Imagine a man of God, T.D. Jakes goes to <laughs> pick your favorite man of God, goes on the streets. Everybody knows that one and say, yeah. God said, this is who you are to me, so he told me to marry her. Everybody will walk away. The evidence that God is with somebody 
is by the life that is produced by that somebody. That is the evidence that God is with somebody. It's not simply because of good words. It's words that have an effect. A man that God is backing up. Usually people God will bring to this standard are a certain breed of people. The issue is so many don't want to be dealt with God in this way. That is why you cannot enter into that place. If God cannot break you, he cannot use you. If God cannot break you, God will not use you. If you build yourself, he will allow you to break to understand that it's not about you. When you understand that you are the body of Christ, then God is ready to use you. As long as you're trying to lead yourself, build yourself, do you in the name of God, he will let you be. You're still going to go to heaven because you confessed him. But for him to use you is a different case. Jesus is the word, he is not the mouth. So when the spirit of God comes into your life, he wants also your mouth. God wants your eyes. God wants your ears. God wants your feet. God wants your hands. God also wants your heart. The first thing when he comes in, he comes for your heart. Then after that, he wants to spread, your, he wants to spread himself through your being. Jesus wants to spread himself through your being completely. Any sign of self, he will reject that part. The more Peter advanced from the, from the Matthews and when you go to the books of Acts, you start realizing that Peter became more of a quiet guy. He didn't talk much anymore. The more the scriptures goes, you see then the personality of Peter is completely different from the Peter who was with Jesus. The personality of Saul was different from the personality of Paul. There was a breaking there to go through for God to take over. God does not possess you. The Holy Spirit does not possess you. God wants you to voluntarily give yourself so that you are a living sacrifice. Saying, God possess me. He will not. He can't do that. To possess is to take you against your will. God will never do that. God will break you. He'll allow situation to come until you let go of self. When you realize, not, the moment you get to the place of your way, not my way. Your life, not my life. Paul said it like this, and the life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. When you now become alive in him, you live by faith. The just shall live by faith. It does, you see, many of you confuse believing with faith. Believing is not faith. The devil believes in God, but the devil has no faith. <laughs> because faith is the substance of the future that God has ordained for his people. A destiny and a destination that God has ordained for his people. The devil has no future, so he has no capacity of faith.
you are struggling with work because God is trying to break you. You are struggling in your relationship because God is trying to break you. You are struggling with finances because God is trying to break you. You are struggling with sickness. God is trying to break you. And whatever God will break, he will rebuild and he will use. And the breaking is taking away what Satan made part of you and what you made yourself to be and not what God wanted you to be. God has to get rid of that. Every situation in your life, listen to what it says, all things work for the good of those whom what? love him and who are called according to his will and purpose so all bad things don't work for you unless you love him and god chastises those whom he what loves you are thinking it's a devil no god is allowing it to break you he's trying to take away what satan put in you he's trying to show you what satan brought to you The problem is many of you through difficult situations. People will say, find yourself. No, find Jesus. <laughs> when you're going through difficult situations, people say, well, you need to find yourself. No, find Jesus. Without Jesus, you will not know who you are. You don't know who you are, then you come to Christ. You know Christ, then you know who you are. This is the key. How is your mouth and how is your heart? How do you know that your mouth is ready to be used by God? Is when your heart has been transformed. Not out of hypocrisy. Not out of uh, I will not do those. So you see... When you have to think of not doing something bad, something bad is still in you. You are suppressing it. But when bad things happen and your first thought is to do good, you are delivered. Suppressing something does not mean you have not done it. If you think it to God, you have done it. So getting to the place whereby you don't need to sit there and, and say, okay, I am consciously not going to do this. You have to get to a place whereby I don't even want to do that. For what? It is not even in you to do it. You are free. Amen. There are so many people in church that think they are free and they are not. You may be free from demons, but you're not free from yourself. And you cannot cast you out. You can only break you. If you sit there and say, ah, I break myself in the name of Jesus, it will never work. Situations reveal you. Situations will check you. Situations will reveal you. So I repeat again. <laughs> ah, this is deep. Only some people will really understand what I'm saying. Honestly. Do you know why the Holy Spirit is the comforter? Because there are situations you have to go through, but it will comfort you. But you have to go through it. Christians are trying to avoid situations. Yet God is saying, that I am your comforter. Comforting me through what? Meaning there are situations I have to go through. 
There are some fires I have to go through. There's a hell I have to go through. There's a shadow of death I have to go through. There are places I have to enter, but he will keep me through those places. But there is a building up that God needs to do in me. Unless that happens to you, have you ever noticed it seems like the people that God uses or God gives a great platform use, it's usually look like weak people. Haven't you ever noticed that? It always seems like weak people, people who have mistakes, have errors, and those who think that they are so perfect, God has given them nobody. They'll go online five people. <laughs> it's because God rather have somebody who has mistakes and they know they have mistakes than somebody who thinks they have no mistake? God will spit you out. That's why he says, whether you are hot or cold, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out. Notice God would rather you are cold than he knows what to do with you. God would rather you are hot and he's happy with you. But if you are in between, he will spit you out. Pretenders are in between. God doesn't want pretenders. Listen to me. There's nothing God hates like that. They need to clickbait in order for people to watch them. They will post a video and they will tag their name on there. Okay, if you just want to talk about it, why do you have to tag your name? You want to be seen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Self-righteousness. Anyone that makes mistakes will not dare to put anybody out because they know I just set a standard for God to deal with me. I just chose a standard in which God has to deal with me. So you need to ask yourself that. You need to ask yourself this sincerely, truthfully. What is in me? Am I broken? When they get wild horses, they have to break them. When you go in the military, they have to break you. Anything you do that they need you to be a better version of you, they have to break the old you. For you to join the army of God, he has to break you. If you just want to be a child of God that is going to heaven, you'll be fine. Just receive Jesus. Try your best to live for him. When people see me enjoying life, dressing the way I want, buying things that I want, you don't know what I went through. That's why I don't care what anyone thinks. Where I was, you are not there. You don't know what he brought me from. I will wear Gucci and cast out demons. You wear your sandals and no demon will obey you. You may think these things are value to me. No, they don't. I just enjoy them, but they mean nothing to me because I've been without them. God has to break us. When we prioritize things and people over him, he has to break us. Some of you have made your children God. Some of you have made your husband God. Many of you have made things and idolized things. God has to break that. God is not just a jealous God, but he's jealous for you. He wants all of you, not part of you. And sometimes when people have nothing, they love God, but they have not been broken. Because when they start getting things, they forget God. They were never broken. Their humility was because they have nothing. If you want to know you're very humble, when God blesses you, it will show. 
<laughs> it's deep. True humility, when you have the power to do things and you still cover yourself, it shows that you're truly humble. Humility is not just what you say is who you are. God has to break us. You can be the most gifted person. You may have a great mighty grace over your life. But if Jesus has not broken you, ah, I am sorry, you're stuck. So I will ask one more time. Have thou been broken? Will you allow him to break you? Fasting doesn't break you. Because fasting is not a situation. Many of you fast because you want something from God. When you go hungry and you have nothing to eat and you still love him and depend on him, some of you, that's where God will move, not when you're fasting. <laughs> because your fasting is still based on you and what you want. And after you get what you want, he can't do what he wants with you. Can Jesus break you and will you accept? Moses went through the greatest breaking you can think of. From Prince of Egypt to a murderer to a shepherd boy from the throne to all these things, then God sends him as a deliverer with a staff, not with a sword. Do you know how he had to believe in God? He was broken. Tonight, Assess yourself. Don't pray out of religion. Pray out of true desire to be a weapon in his hands, to be a double axe in his hands. Some of you, you just panic all the time. The act of giving it to God truthfully will be the breaking that God wants. Everyone's breaking is different because we all are struggling with different things. Can Jesus do what he wants? That's the question. So tonight, when you go before God, be naked before Him. Genuinely. Put all things before him and tell him, Father, yeah, I know. This is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. I know this is not a demon. It's character. Father, do what you have to do. I surrender myself in your hands. A true act of surrender will make, you God, will make God bring you out of that. If you get angry so quick, God wants to break you. He will bring some people to poke you. <laughs> when you get to the point that you're like, ah, it does, ah, we all just have mistakes. I won't act like that anymore. Now you are broken. God can empower you.
Because God will never give a nuclear bomb to a baby. He will kill people. And God is patient in empowering us because he knows his gifts are without repentance. So if he gives you something powerful, but your heart has the potential to be wicked, he can't reverse what he did. So God has to make sure you get there the right way. Stop binding your thoughts. Start observing. Why do I think this way? Because there are thoughts inspired by evil spirits and there are thoughts that are just you, your way of life. Who you listen to, what you do, has made you to be the way you are. I pray in the name of Jesus that God will show us his mercy and grace and that by his spirit the Lord will mold us that his breath will flow through our breath that his spirit will move on our tongues that when we speak we will speak life we will speak the language of the spirit we will speak the language of the spirit of God which produces life. Father, we thank you that you are good. In Jesus' name, amen. You are so loved. You are so treasured. May God keep you and bless you. Until tomorrow, God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless you. This is Prophet Lovi Elias, Miami. I am coming November the 18th at the James L. Knight Center for a mighty night of the prophetic and deliverance and the mighty word of God. Your life will never be the same again. November the 18th at the James L. Knight Center. I will see you soon. Like no one made the arm. <laughs> and I'm the